We are surrounded by chemicals every day. Chemicals can help improve our lives, but we must make sure that we use them safely. Luckily, we have new scientific approaches to help with this. Let's take a look at some of the ways we can get information about how chemicals might affect you, other people, or our environment. Each of us is made up of billions of individual cells that all do different things depending on where they are in the body. The cells of your liver or brain work very differently than, say, the cells of your skin. This difference is largely due to what genes they express and the different proteins expressed as a result. To understand how a person might react to a medicine, chemical, or even food, we can look closely at how chemical exposure affects cells of the body. Technology has advanced so that we can take a few cells and grow them in a petri dish in a way that allows the cells to behave almost as they would inside the body. Once the cells are growing happily in a dish, we can use them for scientific tests. We can poke them in different ways, say by adding a chemical, and examine how they look, how they feel, and what they are saying, biologically speaking. For example, cells can respond to their environment by expressing more or fewer different proteins from their genes, or by turning genes on or off, and we can measure that response in the presence of chemicals. Some genes can be switched on to call for help, some genes are turned off when the cell isn't working right, or sometimes the cell doesn't react and there are no changes. In this way, scientists can get a snapshot of what the chemical is doing to the cells. If we test cells from many different parts of the body, we can see how different organs might be affected. Using complex culture systems with two or more cell types growing together, we can look at how cells communicate with each other. Scientists have recently begun to create sophisticated cell systems that can mimic organs. They are tiny, the size of microscope slides, and are called organs on a chip. Many of these are now available, many livers, kidneys, intestines, lungs, even hearts and brains. Using the results from this kind of testing, we can piece together the molecular pathways of interactions that can occur after chemical exposure, beginning with the first interaction when the chemical meets the cell and the changes that occur as a result, all the way through changes in organs and tissues to what finally happens in the body. We collect this information in a computer database and link it all together to make a virtual representation of the interactive pathway. We combine this information with other research and put it all together in a common database in a computer to create a collection of biological pathways, a virtual network that demonstrates how the chemical affects our biology. We then use this information to build computer models that will predict what might happen if we expose a cell or even the whole body to a new chemical. The more and better information we give the model, the better the predictions will be. Using these modern biological techniques, combined with improved computer data systems and prediction models, we can understand more about the chemicals that surround us and make better choices regarding their use to keep you and me and our friends safe from potentially harmful exposures.